Sometimes guys, the best mods are free mods. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do one of the most popular free mods to the E63. Check this out. I love this car. Hey guys, welcome back to Exotic Car DIY. So in some of my previous videos, we've talked about tunes and it's no secret that this car has a bone stock tune on it. The only thing aftermarket is just the downpipes. I'm not opposed to big horsepower mods. I just personally chose that that's what I wanted to do for my daily driver. But let me describe a scenario to do that happens all the time. And sometimes this is why people actually mod their cars to make more power. You go out, it's 70 degrees, the car's fully warmed up. You do a pull and it feels amazing. And then you go around the corner, you do another pull, and it feels like the car falls on its face. There's an interesting system here with the heat exchanger. So the M157 has a water-cooled heat exchanger for the air charge. And unlike the E55 in the previous generation, the pump does not run all the time in the E63. In fact, it only runs when the temperature of the water gets above like 105 or 110 degrees. So there's a lot of talk about why Mercedes did that, whether it be emissions or whatever, everybody can speculate. The truth is, I don't know. So a couple things happen here. Either A, you do a pull and everything kind of gets heat soaked and then the water pump shuts off because it's at 109 degrees. The next time you do the pull, you got boiling hot water going through and it just takes a while for it to circulate and cool down. The other scenario is you do a pull and it's below 109 degrees, so the pump's not running. Well, by the time the temperature sensor slowly clicks up, gets above 110, it's already too late. There's only hot water in the system. It just doesn't have time to stay cool. So what the always on pump mod does, basically it goes back and makes it like the previous generation on the E55s. The coolant pump is always circulating the water. And by doing that, you get more consistent runs. So every run is gonna feel virtually the same. And so I did this mod about a year ago. Honestly, I didn't make a video on it or didn't post the video because it's a little bit ghetto and I like to have a certain high standard, but it's such a useful mod that I'm just gonna go ahead and post the video. So here's the deal. There's a relay that turns on the pump. That relay, just like any other relay, needs either a ground or a positive for it to turn the power source on. The ECU will ground out the relay when the temperature's above 110 degrees in your water and that will turn on the pump. Well, all you do in this mod is you just ground it out so it runs all the time. Now, there are several ways to make that connection. Uh, Probably the easiest is just to splice into that wire and short it to ground. But like you guys saw in my subwoofer video, I'm not a fan of cutting harnesses. I don't like cutting anything. So I did not want to splice any wires. So that means I do have more of a very temporary fix. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna shove a wire into the relay and it gets pinched between the contactors. It's not going anywhere. It's completely temporary. It's completely reversible. It has no ill effects and you can easily pull it out when you're done. The pros of doing this mod is basically it's free. Two, it's gonna give you more consistent runs all the time. Three, I think it's better for the engine because it's never gonna get in a situation where it has an uncooled air charge going into the motor. So there's actually a big thread on this on MB World. I'll link it in the post below. A lot of people have tested this. They've logged their runs and they find that there's a dramatic decrease in the intake air temperatures, like 20, 25 degrees across the board. So it results in consistent, safer runs all the time. And I'm all about, I want that 577, 590 all the time in this. Let's talk about drawbacks real quick. So the only drawbacks that I found are two. One is that the pump's gonna run a lot more. Is the pump gonna wear out sooner? I don't know. That's debatable too, because a lot of pumps, what kills them is going off, on, off, on. Running all the time is actually better for your pump. Talk to your weld guys or talk to your AC guys. It's always better to have the pump run longer than it is shorter. The one other drawback to this is it will throw a code, not a check engine light. It's an internal code, not really an air code, but just a descriptive code that says that your heat pump relay is shorted to ground. These systems are really, really smart. So anyway, here is the video I shot like a year ago of how I did this. And like I said, it is just poking a wire through, but that is better than cutting the harness in my opinion. All you need to do this is buy in one of these little fuse links from like AutoZone. On one end, we've soldered on a connector to uh, hook it to the ground. On the other end, I've made it go down to a 16 gauge wire that I've put some solder on there. The reason we did this is because you kind of got to poke it through a very small hole. Now you don't have to do this, but I've undone the coolant tank just so I can have a little bit more room. Right here is the relay we're gonna be working with. And so on this relay, if we open it up, now this pin right here with the yellow grommet and the brown wire with the blue stripe, that's what the computer 
shorts to ground to turn the pump on. So what we're gonna do is just basically short this to ground. So you can either cut your harness and splice it, which I don't really like to do, or B, you can push this ground wire through that hole and just kind of put it in the pins up here and that'll turn the pump on as well. Some people can shove a wire all the way up through there and they hope it touches the contact, but it's very hard to go in there and I just don't want to risk the, you know, that one of these will get uh, accidentally shorted too. Uh, so what I did is I took a little bit of dielectric grease and kind of just slowly worked this way around. And as I did that, this started to spin and I could slowly extract the yellow plug out, which shows us the terminal where the wire needs to go. So now what I'm gonna do is take this end, and again, you might have put a little bit of dielectric grease on there. So I'm trying to make it so you guys can see. We're just gonna shove it through the hole. Now if we look in that hole, there's plenty of metal in there for it to get jammed on. Now just find a place where you are comfortable that it's not gonna back out. So there's, it's kind of a, so it's kind of like a spring clip in there. So if you jam it against the wall, it's not going anywhere. Then we'll push our yellow seal back into place so it's watertight. So now you can kind of look in the side and see that it went through the hoop and it's not shorted out with any other thing. So we're going to put back in our purple retainer. So now just to check our work to make sure everything's good, we're gonna check for continuity. And we should have full continuity in this pin and none in any of the others. It's good, it's good to go. So now we can put back our relay. It only goes together one way. So again, I've kind of moved the water tank out of the way just so I can get to it a little bit better for the video's sake. But there's a 10 millimeter down there. And we're going to undo the ground. Install our jumper. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then we'll kind of tuck the wire back into the loom so it looks totally stock again. So here's the finished product with the tank back installed and everything as you can see. Looks all factory. You can see our fuse is accessible so if we ever want to remove it, you can either pull on that wire really hard or you can just take the fuse out. And uh, the way you know it's working is if you go and turn the car to the on position but don't start it. You can actually hear the pump working now, so we can undo our cap up here. You can see the water is circulating now, and the pump, which is way down there, you can actually hear and feel that it's on. So anyway, it is working. Like I said, this is going to continually circulate that fluid, so we always have fresh, cool fluid. Instead of kind of that inconsistent, you know, uh, hot cold that it's going to get before, it also just constantly keep it cooler.